To the final whistle, then it's that time again. It's the championship predictions, and we're looking ahead to week 43. Then we're going to go through all the weekend's games. We're also going to look back at week 42 with the championship games from midweek. We're going to look back at them games, and uh, yeah, guys, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel as well. Um, let me know in the comments your score predictions for this weekend's games um and let's get my guest football martin in. So how are you mate i'm good mate not bad at all nice result in midweek for us so it was uh not bad I played a tough coventry side so uh yeah buzzing and still off from that um hopefully we don't uh we don't blow it this weekend but uh, it's, it's the championship just you, you know just anyone can beat anyone can't they it's so exciting this season it's uh going to be well one hell of an end to the season we've been building it up for months and months now and we're right at the very very bitter end now aren't we yeah right at the bitter end some surprise results are coming through um mm. with teams really starting to walk their game now martin yeah no there are um relegation scraps just unbelievable really sheffield wednesday doing what they did midweek. They've put themselves within a hell of a chance of getting out of it. You wouldn't have never said that when Danny Rowe went in there. That's exciting. And then you've got, you know, it's bizarre in it. Southampton struggled to score a goal against Blackburn. Blackburn looked really good, played really well. Then midweek, go to Bristol City and get absolutely thumped. It's just, mm. you cannot write it, can you? Leicester goes to Millwall. The bank of three points. Didn't get the three points. Leicester, a leader at home to Sunderland. You think, again, they get the three points. They didn't. They dropped two. Um, Ipswich, you, you put them on to win uh, in, in their game on Wednesday against Watford. They didn't get the three points. Southampton do. They kind of give, you know, they're, they're out of it. They're almost giving themselves a little bit of a, there's that glimmer of chance that you just hang on to, yep. you know. Probably not going to do it, but you just never know. You, if other people don't do their jobs and you do, who knows? You just never, never know. Yeah, it's the, it's the championship for you, and anything can happen. Uh, anyone can beat anybody. The unpredictability of the championship. This is the part of the season now where there's some real twists and turns at either side of the table, even for even the playoff spots. Um, let's have a look at week 36, Martin. Uh, let me share my screen to you. Uh, we're going to have a look through some of the fixtures. We'll talk through some of them. We'll start mm. with the Tuesday night games. Um, Leicester defeat at the Den. Um, Longman with an absolute long-range shot, which found the top corner and gave Millwall all three points. Leicester City failed to win. Um, I mean, Millwall was good in the game. Um, I think they wanted it more than Leicester. Millwall turned up. Leicester didn't. Um Always a tough game to go to the den, though, Martin, when you go there. Really uh, Millwall side who's fighting for their lives down where the relegation battle is. Um, Leicester, though, I mean, yeah, defeat for them. What did you make of the game at the den, Martin, Millwall-Leicester? What a goal, Jack, by the way. Boy, that mm. was a really, really good strike. No, I was surprised when I saw it. To, for, for the, I, I just thought it would be a bank of three points like you, like we did. You know, After the weekend's result, but they, they lost to Huddersfield on the weekend it's so unpredictable the division but no surprise that I, I, I saw sky sports um a couple of days ago i think it was on the wednesday night games they were reflecting on the tuesday night and they were kind of saying that um they just said that leicester just had a lot of possession but weren't didn't penetrate in any way or form i wasn't there but from what from what i hear just didn't didn't really really go for it is it that a fair assessment yeah, poor performance all round from Leicester, um, to be honest. Um, 
not not the ideal performance we expected from the Foxes. Um, a game that we had to go and win, a real must-win game to drop points. At this stage of the season, you're kind of still looking over your shoulder. Um, but yeah, Plymouth Plymouth 1-1 with QPR, Martin. I mean, mm. what did you make of that one? A big point for Plymouth? Yeah, massive. against QPR? Massive. They just they can't buy a win, though, um, at home. Can they? They're really struggling to find form at home. They're going to have to find one in a minute. It's where Leicester go on Friday night. But Plymouth, they've not won a game at home now uh, for, I believe, they've in the last seven, they've lost five, drawn two, seven games without a win down at home park. And, that, and home form for them is really important. But they clawed one back because they were 1-0 down against QPR. And QPR are a good side, aren't they? Um, corner come in and, and they managed to get to get on the end of it and, and get themselves a point but it might just be enough just to kick start them because they're just they, they're going to need to they're going to need to buy a win or two aren't they to pull themselves clear of that relegation scrap because uh, it's tight down there I'm sure you've probably showed the table in a bit but it is really really tight down there but massive massive point for Plymouth against an informed QPR side they've been good under Sifuentes we've said that a lot on here haven't we uh, done a good job there as as manager and uh, yeah they're, they're almost safe I don't think they go down QPR though I think they'd be safe Preston come from 1-0 down to beat Uddersfield Town four goals to one another big win for Preston putting pressure on that uh, mm. sixth spot of the playoffs um, which Norwich currently hold uh, mm. big, big, big result for Preston but then um, a kind of a Dipping result with, for Huddersfield with the relegation battle for them. Yeah, surprise. I saw the highlights, actually. Um, I watched the the EFL show early hours this morning, actually. And uh, mm. uh, the the boy that came off the bench and scored the hat-trick for, for Preston North End. Boy, he's a unit, isn't he? Is it, uh, I can't pronounce his name. Is it Ozovic? Or his name is the, the striker. But, go. Oh, really, really good goals that he scored. He come on. It, it, was, a, it was a hat-trick he scored. And won him the game. Um, brilliant, brilliant substitution from Ryan Lowe, you've got to say. But yeah, didn't expect that result at all. I thought um, Huddersfield a bit, bit more of a fight up in that one. But um, yeah, it's a good result for Preston North End. And uh, yeah, Ryan Lowe, they've had a fairly good season. A little blip in the middle, didn't they? Mm. But, um, they, they, they have runs of form where they go really well. And then they, they, they kind of go on a little bit of a barren run. Don't Can't buy a win for a few weeks. And all of a sudden they get a shot result like that. And they go and they batter um, Huddersfield 4-1. But... I think Huddersfield will be a bit bit alarmed at that because they had a good result at the weekend. And then they go put performance like that. This is a championship. It's so unpredictable, isn't it? Yeah, then you, then you look at Norwich, Martin. Two goals to nil up against uh, Sheffield Wednesday. Sheffield Wednesday called fighting back and got two goals back and it ended up a draw over a massive point for Sheffield Wednesday. Um, mm. Yeah, took Norwich by surprise. They did, yeah. Last ten minutes, both the goals for for Sheffield Wednesday as well. It's a fair play to them, um, but but to be fair, one of the Sheffield Wednesday goals looked like it could have been avoided for me as well. The goalkeeper's trying to play it out from the back, um, trying to play play from the back like Southampton or Leicester do, and sometimes um, I think a side like that, you just, maybe you just want to uh, just be a little bit more professional about things. But yeah, it was a sloppy goal. One that one of them that they conceded from um, Sheffield Wednesday. But big result for them. They're giving themselves a real, real sniff. We'll look at their fixture for the weekend. But I haven't seen it, actually. I don't know if they've got the weekend. But, you know, they're there. They're, I think they're well, at a point yep. of safety still. There's a, group, there's a pile of them. Um, so they're well, well within a chance of getting out of it, Jack. Yeah, then your boys, Southampton, a big 2-1 win over Coventry. Coventry side who have really done well, haven't they, despite that um, defeat to mm. Cardiff in, in the... I think it was last week. Um, yeah, you know, Hadji Wright, penalty miss. Mm. Um, Southampton, though, capitalised, won the game. Yeah. I mean, what did you make of Saints' performance against Cov? Really good 45, first 45. They played really well, Southampton. They were really good. They, they got amongst it from the get-go. A little bit more direct than they have been recently. Definitely got a reaction from his players. Uh Cov, I was a little bit disappointed with that. Actually. I didn't think they 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 were great at all, to be honest. They they had an early penalty in the game, um, which probably wasn't a penalty. Hadji Wright um, double kicked it. He kicked it with both feet. Uh, hit the bar anyway. Um, free kick was awarded. So an early free kick for them. 
I thought Southampton controlled the majority of the game, to be honest. That they were the better side. Uh, the I, I think we're sort of going at half time. Shea Adams got both the goals. One of them was a deflection off of um, Carl Walker Peters as a shot, and it comes off the sort of the back of Shea Adams and goes in. Um, but Adams is, is still really important for Southampton. He splits our fan base, but still a really important player. And then, um, yeah, they almost let Kov back in it second half. Second half, Saints weren't anywhere near as good as they were in the first half. They just kind of lost a little bit of control of the game. And and, and Coventry come into it, and, that, and they, it wasn't until the last sort of five, ten minutes that they had a proper go, Kov. Mm. But, um, yeah, they're going to need to play a lot better to beat Man United in the in the FA Cup. And that, But they know that. They know that they'll have to be a bit better than that. But yeah, Kov was just a little bit disappointed with Jack. I, th- I thought they were good. they were going to cause us all sorts of problems, to be honest. But um, yeah, there's a lot of bookings in the game as well, and a lot of petty little fouls and things like that. But um, Bidwell scored the goal for them. It was a mm. good goal. Took it well. Uh, I was quite impressed with him on the night as well. Callum O'Hare was good. Uh, yeah, it was a a good win for Saints. They needed it. Uh, Leeds United dropping points uh, against Sunderland. I mean, Leeds, a must-win game for Leeds, really, if you looked at it. I mean, they obviously started after Leicester uh, by mm. about 15 minutes, wasn't it? They kicked off rather later. Yeah. Um, Leeds, though, a nil-nil draw with Sunderland. I mean, mm. what did you think of the result at um, Ellen Road, Martin? Couple, they could have had a couple of penalties by the looks of it. Leeds, I think the mm. fans will be aggrieved at the, uh, at the at, at certainly one of the decisions as well. I don't know who it was that handballed the ball, but didn't look great from what I saw on TV. Um, but yeah, Leeds are just stuttered when when they really when I, I said to you on the show that they were top and they were it was the first time they'd been top and they were going to come under pressure and did they have the balls to hold it and see it through. It was probably in their hands, Jack, as well, to really have a go yep. at it. I know you had the game in hand. Mm. Um, and it was a, and you, another game you thought, bank of three points leads against the Sunderland side. you have been dreadful recently, let's be honest. When, yep. when, I, when I saw them, I thought they were the worst side I've seen um, for a long time. But they, they, did, they, they, didn't, they didn't, get, didn't get the three points they needed. And all of a sudden, um, they slipped out of the top two position, haven't they? And... They're going to have to go some now to t- to to put themselves back in it. I would say um, they're going to they're going to be relying on Ipswich and Leicester dropping points. And like we said earlier, Lip, um, Leicester have got a game in hand, so it's 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 in Leicester's hands still for me. Yeah, um, let's go to Wednesday night's games. This six here, Birmingham again losing Martin, mm. uh, Cardiff City. Um, Errol Bullet side went there and won one nil. Um, Birmingham, uh, when you talk to Birmingham fans, spoke to Spyro, um, he said it was an absolute awful game, awful performance, not mm. l- really lack of fight, real lack of desire in the game. Mm. And Birmingham remained to struggle, Martin, in 23rd place. Yeah, they're in a mess. One from the bottom now. Um, Gary Rowett, but he's got the one win since he's gone in there. Mm. Yeah, it's just not happening. A home game as well, Jack. Really important to have a home game and try and get wins on the board at home. But they're in big, big trouble now, aren't they? Um, they got a massive game this weekend. Not an easy fixture neither. But um, they take on Coventry, Jack, this weekend. Um, I fear a little bit for Birmingham now. I thought they were going to be fine. But um, yeah. the only saving grace is they've got Rotherham next weekend. So they might be able to get themselves three points there. But... I think the big game for them is going to be on the 27th of April when they take on Huddersfield away. It could mm. decide who stays in the division, Jack. Yeah, I fully agree. Uh, next one, Bristol City 5, Blackburn Rovers nil. I mean, Blackburn, they beat Sunderland five goals to one not long ago and then they've, they've come on the back of a defeat of a five-goal themselves against Bristol City, a, a dominant Bristol City Performance, you'd say five mm. five nil, a big result for Bristol City, and an even worrying one for Blackburn. Yeah, unprofessional result, isn't it? Really, they were mm. really good against Southampton. I watched the game and studied the game when we played them at the weekend, and uh, I thought they looked really, really solid. Um, Blackburn, well organised, good, good fighting spirit. Looked like I thought, oh yeah, they, this is a side that's going to stay in the division. This, you know, they they, they look bang up for it, but. That they're causing themselves all sorts of problems that they shouldn't go down. But there's, you know, what they're 18th at the minute with 46 points. Sheffield Wednesday 43 points um, from the same amount of games. So they're only they're only the three points from 
from safety. You know, they're in a bit of trouble. There's a pack of teams there, isn't it, really? From Millwall downwards, Blackburn, Stoke, Plymouth, Huddersfield, Sheffield Wednesday and Birmingham are all in this relegation scrap. It'd go right to the wire, mate, as well, I think. Yeah, Ipswich, um, they picked up a point against Watford. Not the ideal result for Ipswich, to be honest, as they had a chance to go top after Leeds and Leicester dropped points. Mm. Um, they, they didn't take advantage. Watford, I thought Tom Cleverley's gone in there now and he's picked up four straight draws um, mm. as Watford coach. Um, yeah, the, I think they frustrated um, Ipswich. Obviously, Ipswich had two good chances in the first half with mm. Kiefer Moore uh, with the header and... Um, Broadhead as well, but yeah, Watford aside, who put up a fight last night. They they moved the ball quite well. Um, I thought Ipswich for me kind of like tied in the second half a bit, um, where we where Kieran McKenna did go and make the changes. Uh, but yeah, Ipswich dropping points at Portman Road against Watford, Martin. Yeah, no, I was surprised, Jack. To be honest, I was su surprised. I, wa I watched some of the game, didn't watch all of it, but I watched a fair bit of it uh, of this game. And uh, yeah, they had, a, they had a few chances to win at Ipswich, but um, goalkeepers made a save. And is it more up front? Looks he still looks a handful of them. Still think he's mm. a good, good bit of business for them. Gives them a different dimension up front. But they created a few chances, didn't take it. And again, the pressure's on them, isn't it? They're um, going to have to try and get a result at the weekend. Everyone's on their towels. You know, everybody's waiting for teams to falter. But they have two really tough away games now for, for me coming up. Um, they're at home this weekend, I believe. And then they got two away games, which will probably define their season, you, you'd say. Um, Going to have to get something against Middlesbrough at the weekend and put pressure on Leicester and Leeds, which is what they need to do. And everybody else will be hoping they get they, they get defeated. But they do a job at Portman Road, only lost once there all season. So um, McKenna's doing um, nothing short of um, an unbelievable job there. Yeah, um, I think it really shows how relentless the championship is, Martin, with mm. the amount of games and, you know, with the promotion push, you know, it's it's so tight. It's it's a real fight to the finish. Teams are having mm. to up their game and that. And, uh, yeah. yes, it's really about consistency, isn't it? You know, you can't be complacent at this part of the season. Um, Absolutely not. The next one is Hull 2, Middlesbrough 2. I mean, Middlesbrough still undefeated. Um, I mean, they've been fantastic under Michael Carrick and the Martin the last seven, eight games now. Um, Hull, not the result they wanted. Um, they've really struggled to win games at home, aren't they, Hull, Martin? Um, mm. What did you make of Hull versus Borough? A team that were oh, I was tipping for the playoffs, but it's definitely gone for Hull now. You'd have to say, I don't think they'll make the playoffs now. I think it's job, job done for them be very, very difficult to get a playoff position. You, you'd have to say they're going to have to go some if they're going to really, with the, with the form of Norwich and everybody else around them, um, spent a bit of money there, had some good signings in, and then you, you I saw a statistic earlier of how much um, they spent at West Bromwich Albion. And, uh, you know, you look at what Rossini has got at his disposal down there, would have probably expected a little bit more, I expect, that they were looking at a playoff side, but... They'd be bitterly disappointed. Um, I think it's a bit, you know, they're level on points with Middlesbrough now, aren't they? Um, yep. It looks like a mid-table finish. Mm. Uh, Swansea three, Hull City nil. No, not Hull City, Stoke City. Bloody hell. Uh, there's there's the first blooper. Um, Swansea, big win for them. Um, a big three points for them uh, to really... Push them on. Uh, not so great for Stoke, though, was it, Martin, uh, mm. in performance-wise? Swansea right. now, you know, they should stay up, shouldn't the Swansea, with the amount of points they've got now, to be honest. Points, um, yeah, be Stoke, st still in that relegation battle, uh, to be honest. I mean, what did you make of Swansea's, Swansea's win over Stoke? Tell you what, it was a sodden pitch, Jack. I don't know if you've seen the highlights. It was it was really, really wet down there. Mm. By the end of the game, you could hardly see the white lines on the pitch. They faded. There was so much water on the pitch. Um, yep. It pretty much washed away the lines. It was really, really wet down there. But a good performance. They were really at it, Swansea. Not many, not many fans inside the stadium, though. It looked really empty down there. Maybe it's just their league position, but it didn't look like there was a great deal of fans in the stadium. But... A really good result for them. See, see them safe for 50 points, you'd say. Stoke City right in the mess. 
uh, really struggling to find any consistency when you need it at this time of the season. And uh, it, it'd be uh, they'd be looking over their shoulder at the moment because they're being chased down by the by the lights of Plymouth, Huddersfield, Sheffield Wednesday, all breathing down their neck now. Forty six points, same, but they've only got a point more than Plymouth, uh, three more than Huddersfield and, and Sheffield Wednesday, so that they're, they're right in the mix. Um, tough run of fixtures come, I believe, as well. So they're going to need to uh, they're going to need to find some form quick, Jack, because. Uh, Relegation uh, six points this weekend against Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, massive game, massive game. Yeah, time's running out, isn't it, Martin? Um, Big time. West Brom, the last game, beat um, Rob from United. Two goals to nil. I mean, a penalty, a real controversy in that game, Martin. A penalty, yeah. what well, wasn't a penalty? Well, well, it was well outside the box. It was never a penalty. Referee somehow pointed to the spot. And yeah, how bizarre um, that that penalty decision was. And uh, obviously West Brom capitalised and scored on it. But yeah, yeah, poor EFL officiating in that one. But yeah, yes, West again. Brom, I think that um, cements their playoff spot, doesn't it now, Martin? Yeah, no, it does. Yeah, it looks like they've... Uh... They've done enough to guarantee their spot, and it looks like at the moment, as it stands, Southampton will, will be playing West Bromwich Albion in that um in one of those playoff games. So yeah, that does that does make me a little bit nervous. I've got to be honest. I think they're a really good side, Jack. I've got to be honest. Um, he's done very very well, the manager there, very very well. You've got to say, um, with with no, he spent no money. That's the most unbelievable thing about it, really. So um, yeah, fair fair play to West Brom. Um. Just keep getting the results when you need them and you won't want to play them in a in a playoffs. So I think they'd be a nightmare to play against. Agreed. Um, Martin, let's go on to week 43 then, the championship mm. predictions for the weekend. Some yeah. big games to call in this this weekend as well. Uh, we're gonna start with the Friday night game. Mm. Plymouth versus Leicester. Um both sides fighting for two different things in the table. Plymouth fighting to stay up. Leicester. Um, fighting for promotion. Let this is one where the Foxes have got to get back to winning ways, isn't it, Martin? A real huge game for the Foxes now. Um, how do you see this one going with Leicester traveling to home park to take on Plymouth? I think Leicester going to need to get three points on the board, that's for sure. Mm. I, don't, I don't think it'd be an easy game, though. Um, going to have to real go some, Jack. Um, Plymouth, well, I was saying at the top of the show that. They're not winning loads of games at home. That's the only thing they've not won at home in seven games. Uh, they did come behind on Tuesday night. Um, fair play to them for doing that. But yeah, I don't think it's an easy game for Leicester. They've netted the first 16... They've netted 16 times uh, as the first goal in 21 of their away trips this season, though, Leicester. They've won 12 of those, drawn two, lost two. Um, I think Leicester will win this one, I've got to be honest. I don't see, I don't see Leicester losing... Two on the spin, I really don't. Certainly not. Get no disrespect to Plymouth. I don't think you go down there with the squad they've got and and, and get defeated. Um, I'm going to go with the three-one Leicester win for this one, Jack. Three-one Leicester. I'm going to bat you on that, Martin. Uh, tough game, and isn't it Plymouth mm. away? Um, I mean, Leicester have got to go and put in a big performance. You know, it's a huge, huge game for the Foxes and a real must-win now. Uh, mm. We can't afford to slip up at all. Um, you know, it's it, it's a cha- it's a real chance for Leicester, isn't it, Martin? To yeah, to, to get the win and then put pressure on the likes of Leeds and Ipswich, who obviously play on Saturday. So. Yeah, it's, it's one that the Foxes have to go out, out and win and really put that Millwall defeat behind them. So, mm. yeah, I think we'll get back to winning ways against uh, Plymouth. I'm going to go 3-1. I'm going to go Whitaker to score for Plymouth. Um, I'm going to go for Kenny Drewsbury Hill to score for Leicester in a 3-1 win. So, Stop yeah, I'm going to bat you on that one. Um, he's nominated for the uh, player of the season, isn't he, RC, for the he is. Drewsbury with some of Villain Smodic. Yeah, I would say that's yeah, three, three of the best. All, yeah, yeah, they're all deserved, didn't they? In their own right, yeah. It's hard, it's hard um, to name. It's hard to uh, select three, though, isn't it? Because there's so many good players. It is league. when there's so many good players in the league. You know, it's hard to really put your finger down to who the, who the three top players are. I and mean, obviously, they all go by stats and that, don't they? So yeah. Um, yeah, Martin. Next one: Leeds United versus Blackburn. The twelve thirty kickoff on Saturday. Mm. Um. How do you Tension see this growing at Ellen Road. 
tension growing, you would say, Ellen Road. You've got still under, it. still undefeated at home. Leeds. Yeah, they've they've won just one. They've uh, Leeds have won just one of their last four matches. They've drawn two, lost one. Slip a point off the off the pace at the moment. Uh, he was frustrated, wasn't he, um, Daniel Farker, with his size, lack of creativity in that game mm. against Sunderland. And that's not something you put with Sunderland uh, with Leeds at the moment, is it? Again, that game, there were there was a lack of creativity with the players they got. Really surprising with, with, with what he's got at his disposal. And you got to say it's got to be to do with pressure and where they were in the division, because they've been flying up until now. Um, it was the first failure to win a league out in Ellen Road since December, because they've won the previous nine at home with Leeds, but they've got a good head-to-head -head against Blackburn as well, I, re I read. They've won 16 and drawn five at Ellen Road against Blackburn Rovers. Um, they'd be fancying their chances in this one. But you know what? I know Blackburn got thumped in midweek, but they're going to have to respond. Yep. Um, and I think they will. I think they go there and get a point. Going to go with an upset. I don't often go with upsets. So I'm going to go against the grain. And I'm going to go with a 2-2 draw. So to draw. They're set up well organised against them, they will. They were against Southampton. A side that like the ball, like Leeds do, they will set up differently against them than they will do a Bristol City that likes to go long and go, go into the box. It'll suit them mm. to a little bit more Blackburn. They won't get smashed, that's for sure. This is where Blackburn will look to frustrate Leeds. Uh, Blackburn will look to put that 5-0 thrashing behind them from Bristol City. You know, they'll, they'll look to um, turn their form around going into this game. Um, you know, and Leeds, Leeds pressure's on, isn't it? You know, they, mm. they know they need to win these games now and really start picking up the points because time's running out. Um, they are still undefeated at Ellen Road. They have been all season. Um, I'm going to... I tell you what, I'm going to back Leeds. I'm going to back Leeds to win. Um, I'm going to go Leeds United two, Blackburn Rovers one. I think if Blackburn are going to score in the game, Schmodis will score. Um, but yeah, Leeds have really got to start picking up the pace now, haven't they? You know, um, within that battle with Leicester and um, Ipswich, it's because it's coming ever so tight. So yeah, they need to, um, like you say. Pick up again because one win in the last four, yeah, it's not really something that Daniel Farker would really like looking at a stat drop, like that. So. Drop points the weekend, drop points the weekend against Blackburn, and they're going to hand it pretty much to Ipswich and Leicester if they get results this weekend. They will do. I think they end up slipping in the playoffs, and and the mentality of the side that slip into the playoffs, whether that's Leeds, mm. uh, Ipswich, or Leicester, it will be yep. really, really difficult. Really difficult. Southampton got the head round it now. They know they're a playoff side. West Brom know they're a playoff side. They can yeah. run themselves in the form. You've got six warm-up games. We've got six warm-up games to get ready for it. Find form, find your best team. It, it's it's massive for, for one of those teams that end up with that disappointment. Um, yeah, it'd be a big test of mentality now for them. I've I seen, I seen someone on social media and they said, it's like no one went, wants to win the title. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. It, it's like there's so much pressure on it sweets Leeds and Leicester yeah. it's like no one wants to win the title it's, it's like what the results do you see mm. it's whether someone can come from nowhere like Southampton you know, could could they get a run of form together now and really mount some pressure and just breathe down their necks because if Southampton get the get the two results that I felt they should have got against Blackburn and mm. Borough Saints would be right in it if they picked up six points on a, you know, it would have been totally different. It would have been totally different. We 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 give ourselves a hell of a chance. Just shows um, our lack of uh, professionalism in a couple of games. Just as like let us down a little bit. But who knows? It could still be open. I'm not going to give up. Going to give up just yet. Yep. Um, next one, Martin, is the Midlands derby at St mm. Andrews. Um, Birmingham City versus Coventry City, Battle of the Cities at St Andrews. Birmingham have really got to start picking up now and really taking the fight to teams and um, prove how much they want to stay in this league because in a minute the confidence is shot at um, St Andrews, isn't it, Martin? They're not yeah. playing well. Um, they, they really now need to start... Um, 
picking up the points before it's too late with time running out. Um, Coventry, though, um, Hadji Wright um, and um, Ellis Sims, two strikers who can score goals, you know. And um, I think this one for me, I think Coventry win this, me, Martin, to be honest. I think Coventry yeah. will have enough to see Birmingham off. I'm going to go 3-0, Cov. Yeah, yeah, I, I think Coventry are uh, causing more sense around Birmingham. Um, obviously, we said they're 23rd in the championship now. They've yeah. lost six of their last seven matches. They've only won one. They failed to score, Jack, in four of the last um, six games, which is not good. It is not good. It is relegation form, isn't it? They are in the absolute mire now. Um, and it's not going to get easy, any easier, is it, um, against no. Coventry at the weekend? Uh, the stadium looks to be have less and less fans in it every week. I see they got permission this week to de uh, develop a 60,000 mm. seat a stadium. Um, there could be a team playing in League One next season, which is which is unbelievable. The stadium won't be ready for five years, I'm saying, but I mean, for, to see them drop into League One would be um, would be a crying shame because it's a good football club. What's your prediction for this one, Martin? I'm going to go Cov three nil. Three nil Cov. Interesting. Um, next one, Martin, Bristol City versus Huddersfield Town. I mean, Bristol City, you know, they've walked three of the last four games. Um, they're in some fine form. Huddersfield are really looking to scratch the points now, aren't they? You know, they need mm. to get as many points as they can with, obviously, Birmingham um, not far behind them, Sheffield Wednesday as well. So, this is a real must-win mm. now for Huddersfield. It's a game it where they've got to like I say, pick up the points. So I think Huddersfield will make it a tough, tough game for Bristol City. Um, I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. I'm going to lose my first draw, 1-1. One, one. Not got loads to play for Bristol City, really. Huddersfield have conceded no. four plus goals in eight league games this season. The most they have done since 1955-56 uh, season. Mm. Going to have to stop conceding goals. I think, do you know what? I'm going to go with an upset. I think Huddersfield will go there and get a result. I'm going to go with a 1 0 Huddersfield win um, just to put some real pressure on everyone else down the bottom. Yeah, Huddersfield are fighting for their lives down the bottom now, aren't they? You know, Bristol City, you know, they're not going to they're not going to finish in the playoffs, are they? You know, there's nothing to play for. They're just going to get as many points as they can now, Bristol City. Um, and like I say, see the games out. Um, next one, Martin Hall City versus QPR Hall. Not mm. great at home, aren't they, Martin? To be honest, uh, quite a lot of draws they picked up, haven't they? Mm. Hall, um, including that one against Borough. Um, not won a game for a while at home. Hall mm. City, the tech on the QPR side, Sifientes. I mean, they could probably go there and cause an upset, to be honest, but mm. um. I think Hull, for me, will have enough to win the game, to be honest. Um, I'm going to go 2-1 to the Tigers. I think they'll get back to winning ways at home. Yeah, no, I think they'll probably get, get a result. They're decent away, though, QPR, since Sifuentes has come in. He's done all right. That That is a big part of the reason why they've turned form, really. Um, exceptional away form. They've only lost on the road um, once since late December. They've won four, drawn three, lost one. So they're mm. decent on the road. You know what? I'm going to go with the draw, Jack, in this one. I'm going to go with the 1-1 draw. Um, don't think QPR necessarily get beat. Philogene's the player to watch. Look at the score for a third straight match. He's registered four goals and assists for Hull since returning from an injury uh, at the start of February. He's a key man for them. Yep. Uh, next one. Um, Ipswich Town versus Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough on some fine form going into this one and beating them yeah. the last eight, I think, Borough. Mm. The take on an Ipswich side, who oh, this is a big game, isn't it, for Ipswich? You know, Portman Road have only lost one game and that was against Leeds at Portman Road in, in the league. So, yeah, this is one where they really have to go out and give it their all and go and win the game, to be honest. But I think this will be a real tough game for Ipswich. Um, I think Watford, you know, got out of Ipswich last night, you know, it was a good game to watch, Ipswich and Watford, but I think mm. Middlesbrough will go there and cause them problems, and I think Middlesbrough will go there and get a point, to be honest. So, I'm going to go yeah. for a draw. Um, I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. 
No, I think they've been upset in this one as well. Middlesbrough yet to keep a clean sheet in any away league game against a side mm. beginning the, the round of games above them in the division. They've won two, drawn one, lost four. I actually think they caused an upset, Jack, this weekend. Um, Ipswich are going to have to go some, like we said. Uh, it's a game that they were going to want to win, but I actually think that they will inflict their second home defeat of the season at Portman Road. Middlesbrough, Latte Lath is in really good form for them. It is, yeah. I'm going to go with a with a two one win for uh, Michael Carrick's Middlesbrough. They were good yeah, at St Mary's. Is. They're well organised. They're causing problems because they're organised. And Latte Lath is is a danger man. Yeah, Rich, Rich are under pressure, aren't they? You know, the, the top three are under pressure, aren't they? You know, they have to go yep. and win games. And, uh, you know, it's that battle of who's going to finish top and who's going to finish second. So. Um, or even in the playoffs. Uh, it's interesting, and that's obviously in the back of Kieran McKenna's mind, isn't it? The, the pressure is on now. They've got four games to go and get points, and they can't afford mm. to drop any at this point of the season. Um, next one, Martin Millwall versus Cardiff City. I believe this is the Neil Harris derby. Um, mm. He's managed both clubs. That's why I call it the Neil Harris derby. He's managed both clubs. Um, he takes... He takes his Millwall side into this game, having beat Leicester three massive points for the Lions mm. on Tuesday night, it was, um, after defeats to Rotherham and Huddersfield. That that sums up the championship, doesn't it, Martin, where a team can mm. lose to two teams who's near the bottom and then go beat someone at the top, um, which is obviously what Millwall did. Um Cardiff, though, they're doing, they're doing quite well under Errol Bullet, aren't they, Martin, to be honest? Um, I see this one being Cardiff just edging this one, two goals to one. Yeah, I think there's a lot of talk, though. Um, Errol Bullet is, uh, they reckon he's fighting to save his job. They reckon his contract expires at the end of the season after barely a campaign in charge. Mm. He's probably going to want to get another win or two on the board, that's for sure. But I fancy back to back victories for Millwall, to be honest. Um, head of the round, though, Millwall have conceded a joint league high of seven goals after the 90th minute. So if it's tight as it goes into the 90th minute, you just never know. Cardiff like a late goal, goal or two, as we found out against uh, Ipswich early on in the season. But I, I think Millwall are, are win this one. I'm going to go with a 2-1 Millwall victory, Jack, in this one. And I think that will see Millwall safe. And Neil Harris, yeah. who's done a great job for them. Yeah, for me, I, I think, to be honest... A point or three now for Millwall will see them safe. Um, I just see Cardiff edging it. Um, I think them three points against Leicester was key for Millwall, to be honest, in the race to stay up and uh, three huge points, which um, is going to be key now in the next coming games. Um, the next one, Martin Preston Norwich is mm. a bit, it's a, it's a big one, this one, isn't it? I mean, Preston looking to nick that sixth spot. Norwich looking to cement the sixth spot, Martin. Um, yeah. How do you see this one going at deep down? Yeah, um, no, I think it'd be an interesting one. See if uh, Ryan Lowe's got any more super subs up his sleeve because that um, hat trick that he scored uh, all came after the 80th minute in midweek. Mm. Quite incredible. Didn't realise it was all after the 80th minute. Quite a turnaround. Um, big game for Norwich. They're going to they're going to need to go away and win this. I don't think it's an easy one. I think it's got draw written all over it, to be quite honest with you. Um, yep. it, the reser reverse fixture finished goalless in December. Um, Preston have failed to score before half time in five of their last seven games. Mm -hmm. I just see it being I just see it being a one one draw. I don't know why. I just fancy a draw in this one. Yeah, Norwich don't travel well on the road, do they? Um no. when you talk to Norwich fans, they're really good at home away, they're kind of if and boy proved it against Sheffield Wednesday, going went two 0 up and then two two, and you think how's that happened? Um, talking about Sheffield Wednesday, Martin, then the next mm. one they've got Stoke City. Yeah. This is a relegation six point to this one at Hillsborough. Mm. Uh, th this is one where Sheffield Wednesday are really going to fancy their chances. Mm. Um, they take on Stephen Schumacher's side. I think, to be honest, this is a huge game for both sides. And uh, yes. Sheffield Wednesday being at home is really key in this fixture and uh, one that they'll take look to take advantage of. So I'm yeah. going to back Sheffield Wednesday to win this one, Martin. I'm going to back them to win 1-0. 
Yeah, four games to save their season. Sheffield Wednesday, they are on the verge of doing it as well, aren't they? Just need to avoid a defeat for me. Um, it's something that they've done, though, in uh, in three of their last four games. They've won one, drawn two. I fancy Rail side to get a result in this one. I'm going to go with a 3-0 Sheffield Wednesday win. And Danny Rowe to put his side on the verge of staying in the division. What what an achievement that would be. Be amazing. I believe he's picked up 33 plus points since taking over. Amazing. So that shows how much he's changed Sheffield Wednesday dramatically mm. in the way he's gone about things. Um obviously you'd know him for his time at Southampton with Ralph yeah. Asnoodle and that. He was a brains um, behind him. He was a brains behind mm. him because when he disappeared, they weren't quite as good. Martin, next one, Southampton, Watford. I mean, how do you see this one going for your Saints side? I mean, Watford, four consecutive draws under mm. Tom Cleverley. I mean, could this be another draw in, on, in the making? Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, it's the fourth time we played him this season, unfortunately. Mm. Um, obviously, we, we played him in the FA Cup over two legs. We, we drew away and had to bring him back to St Mary's. I think we beat them 3-0 on the night. They put a fairly strong side out. Saints did rest a few. Shay Adams is in good form for Southampton. Scored a first half, um, two first half goals in midweek. He's been really good. I think he'd be, he'd be buzzing for this one as well. Um, I think Saints will win this one. I, I'm not going to back against us in this one. Uh, Watford haven't been behind uh, at halftime in any of their last six games, uh, according to Flash score. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think Saints will win this one. I'm going to go with a 3-1 win. Um, I just think the pressure's off Southampton. I think the tension got lifted, as Russell Martin said in midweek. And I think they could be free-flowing now. I think they just need to run into form. They kicked, kick-started that on uh, against Coventry. Need to carry it into, into the Watford game because there's, there's two more games at home before we uh, head away to Cardiff next weekend. I really fancy Saints to win this. Win the next two at home. And who knows? Not giving yeah, up hope, Jack. I'm not giving up hope. <laughs> No, um, this is a tough game to call this. Very what for four draws in the last four with Tom Cleverley? Uh, Saints have picked for a big win over Cov. Um, I, I have Watford got goals in them, yes, both teams have so. Hmm. I'm gonna. I'm, I think. I think this will be a tight game. This. This will be a battling one between the two for me. And uh, mm. I just see Southampton will edge it two one. Both yeah. teams to school. Um, next one is Swansea versus Rotherham. Uh, big three 0 win on Wednesday for Swansea. Uh, Rotherham United already relegated. Um, I mean, how do you see Rotherham in this game against uh, Swansea? I think Swansea beat them, and I think they beat them comfortably. Liam Cullen's in some good form. Netted in two of Swansea's last three home matches. Got the opener in the last four um, scoring appearances as well. He's in good form. Rotherham have conceded the opener opener inside uh, 25 minutes in their last four away matches as well. I think Swansea comfortably beat them. I'm going to go with a 3-0 Swansea win, mate, in this one. Yeah, I'm going to bat Swansea as well, actually. Uh, Rotherham don't travel... Mm. really well on the bloody road did it so uh yeah i think it'll go one way traffic to be honest uh rotherham are just now seeing out the season aren't they preparing for league one um and i think that's how it'll go um martin the last one west brom v sunderland um sunderland i mean picked up a big point over leeds west brom you know another win for them will really secure the playoff spot even more. Um, I think this one, for me, the Baggies have enough to win this game for me. I think they've done well under Carlos Carbrahan all season, to be honest, West Brom. Mm. Um, they, they much needed that win over Rotherham after all the draws they'd got before. So I think Sunderland will put in a shift in this game, but I think West Brom will have too much for Sunderland. Um, I'm going to go 2-0. Yeah, been an interesting game, Jack. This one, I think Jack Clark's available now. Is he fit again? Is he back? back yeah, he play, and available? yeah, yeah. I think he played against Leeds on um, Tuesday. Yeah, a man that is in form though is Brandon Thomas Asante. Um, mm. Has lost just two of the last seventeen games when he's hit the back of the net. They've won ten and drawn five when he scored for them. 
he scored in midweek. Good player, isn't he? I really, really like him. I think he's a good he player. Thomas Asande, a bit of a handful to play against. I'm going to go with the draw, Jack. I don't think they'll win it. Um, I think some of them have found a little bit of form recently. Um, they're pretty much guaranteed a playoff spot now, West Brom. Some of them not loads to play for. Going to go yep. to the 2-2 draw, Jack, in this one. 2-2 two, two draw. Yeah. Um, Martin, thanks for joining me on the um, week 43 of the Championship Predictions. Uh, before I let you go, pleasure. plug your channel, mate. Yeah, give me a follow at Football Martin um, over on TikTok. I do loads of TikTok content and a bit of YouTube content as well, though uploading YouTube videos seems to be never be easy. I don't know why. It seems to take a lifetime for me to get a YouTube video up. Loads of good content on TikTok, though. Um, did some unboxing bits this week for the football club. So make sure you go and check those out as well. Um, they got an exclusive new partnership with Puma. I was involved in the, in the launch with the football club on that one as well, which is pretty cool. And um, yeah, yeah, make sure you give me a follow. Cheers, Martin. All Thank the best, you, mate. mate. Cheers. That was Martin. Uh, thanks to everybody for watching the Championship Predictions Week 43. Uh, what's coming up on the final whistle then? So we'll have the match day vlog out for Plymouth away. Fingers crossed the Foxes can pick up all three points. Um, hit the like button if you've enjoyed this stream. Um, subscribe to the channel as well. It helps out massively. Take care, everyone, and up the foxes. Bye-bye. Take care. Hi, all. Thank you for watching The Final Whistle. If you enjoy all our content, please remember to smash a like, share, and subscribe to the channel.